just a very difficult situation for everybody involved. I've known Antonio for a couple of years now, you know, pretty closely. And, you know, we've obviously been teammates and um, I would just say, I, I love him. I care about him. Um, and I have a lot of compassion. I have a lot of empathy for the things that uh, are happening in his life. So it's a lot of challenges we all face from time to time. I think the best thing is to have a support system, even outside of football, because Again, yeah, we are football players. We're athletes. Uh, we give everything we can on the field, but we also have off-field lives too. And um, and I'm going to continue to do everything I can to try to, you know, be a great friend and supportive to Antonio and the things he's going through. So as of right now, 319 Eastern on a Tuesday, January 4th, 2022, um, a full two days after uh, Antonio Brown was kicked off the field and off the team by Bruce Arians and took off his uniform mm. on his way out of MetLife Stadium. Antonio Brown wow. is still a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for reasons unknown, at least that I've seen to anybody. Um, there's been speculation that they just don't want him signing with another contender. I have a different theory. Um, but as you heard just now, um, the Brady to Brown connection does remain strong uh, while the Buccaneers discuss well, next steps with the NFL and uh, we'll unpack more of this because as we knew yesterday there was plenty more left on this here bone but in the meantime here's more from Tom Brady on his let's go podcast I think about Ricky Williams I think about you know Calvin Ridley this year a young player for the Atlanta Falcons that stepped away from the game and um Again, I don't think anyone's living in anyone else's shoes. So you don't necessarily know what other people are going through. Um, all you do is, you know, you're, you show up to work every day and you try to do your job. And you obviously recognize there's a, a lot of teammates in a locker room and you build relationships with those teammates. Um, and I've done it for a long period of time, for a lot of years. And you get to know people. You really try to do everything you can to help them. And, um, you know, I think we... You know, my dad said something the other day, he said, look, all we can do is the best we can do with the opportunities that are presented to us, you know, and whatever that means for different people, whether it's on the field, off the field, family life, professional life, I'm going to try to do the best I can do with the circumstances that I'm presented before me as a person. And I try to live with integrity. I try to live with honesty. And, um, you know, I care about people beyond the football field as well. So, again, it's a very difficult situation that everyone's dealing with and it's shown itself obviously in this example yesterday, but um, it showed itself in the Olympics with Simone Biles and she came out and she spoke quite a bit about it. So um, it's definitely more prevalent than we used to think, you know, we used to think that we were just all, uh, you know, robots out there and we go out there and play and, you know, and, and it's more than that now. And I think there's a recognition of that and we're all, there's a humanity to everything that we're doing out there. And um you know, it's very comforting to know that people are seeing athletes in deeper ways than just their potential on the field as well. For people on the outside looking in who aren't familiar with all the, you know, different normal aspects of, of what happens in a team, you know, it's just you want to look at one situation and categorize something in a certain way. And, um, you know, life isn't like that. And, you know, for the guys on the team who, uh, you know, are working hard every day to commit themselves to what our goals are, you know, we've got to continue to focus on that. And Antonio is a great player and extremely talented player. And, you know, we all want the best for him. We really do. I think there's a very supportive group of teammates and coaches, and it's, it's just a very difficult situation for everybody. I don't think there's a great way to sum anything up other than to say that he has a lot of you know, supportive teammates, and I'm certainly one of them. I love them, and I'm always here for them. Mike, how do you feel after uh, listening to Tom Brady um, express his concern, um, his compassion for Antonio Brown? How does that make you feel, especially I, get, oh picking up off the conversation that we had yesterday? I got to tell you, first of all, that was an excellent Sawatsky question. How do you because feel? Because it is take yeah, it where you want. How, how, how does it make me feel uncomfortable? Yeah, I'm uncomfortable. Does it really? Yes. Well, why? I'm uncomfortable because I am too. I'm but I suspect why. we're uncomfortable for different reasons. But go ahead. 
I'm uncomfortable with Al, uh, 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 well, I was like, who's Albert Brady? I don't even know. I was about to call him Albert Brady. I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with Tom Brady connecting Antonio Brown situation with Calvin Ridley's. I'm in, uh, he mentioned Simone Biles. I'm uncomfortable with that. Hmm. Look, I understand. I do. I, I, I agree with his larger point about mental health and how athletes are not robots and you have to look at the humanity of the person, not just the performer on the field. I'm with them 100%, 200%, 500%, all the way. Yes. I'm just having a difficult time looking at <clears throat> Antonio Brown and, and conveniently, I'm saying it this way, conveniently putting him in mm. that category and then walking away and saying, we don't know. Now listen, if I'm Tom Brady, and this is what Tom Brady has done throughout his career, and he said this, he always meets teammates where they are. And that is one mm -hmm. of the beautiful things about him. That makes you a great teammate, doesn't make you necessarily a great historian or a great journalist. Because if mm -hmm. I'm meeting you where you are, that means sometimes I ignore where you came from. And I ignore some of the things That's a bar. on your resume. That was a bar. Mm -hmm. uh, so, that's where Tom, Tom Brady is ignoring a whole lot of history to have this sermon, this lecture about Antonio Brown, and how much he loves him. I'm glad he loves him. I'm not being sarcastic. I'm glad he's being a great friend. But there's a lot more to the story that Tom Brady either is unaware of or is just willing to wipe the slate clean and start the clock at that moment in the third quarter where Antonio Brown takes off the jersey, takes off the shirt, throws the souvenirs to the audience and says, peace. I'm uncomfortable with that. That's how I feel, Mike. Okay, I appreciate your honesty. Um, as usual, uh, I'm uncomfortable for different reasons. I'm also uncomfortable with aspects of your commentary. One, it's okay. interesting. Would you, would you at least stipulate, would you at least allow for the fact that we may be unaware of some things Absolutely. going on in Antonio yes. Brown's life and between his ears. Okay. Because what's, what was, cause what stood out to me about yeah. Brady is that, and listen, Michael, neither you nor I, we didn't do it yesterday. I don't think we've ever really done it and we're not going to do it today. You nor I is in the business of playing a doctor on television. We are not in the business of diagnosing from a distance. And we are not, we did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. I know I didn't, I don't believe you did either, okay? I so we not, are no. not about to sit up here and suggest that he has CTE or some kind of emotional or psychological or, or mental disorder or some kind of uh, head trauma that he's suffering from and that manifested itself at MetLife on Sunday. We're not in the business of doing that. We leave that to people much smarter than us. Right. But Tom Brady, he didn't come out and say those things, but he spoke in such a way that he was strongly suggesting that not only is Antonio Brown struggling with any or some of the aforementioned issues, but it's understood at minimum. It's understood by Tom Brady and his teammates, but it seems to be the worst kept secret in the league that Antonio Brown is dealing with something okay something right. so what I would say is the same thing I said yesterday because what Tom Brady spoke to what Tom Brady said spoke to what I said yesterday because Michael look just and just to be clear for people who may just be okay. joining us here party just to be clear sure I said this before I say it again I wouldn't have touched Tom uh, I wouldn't have touched Antonio Brown with a 10-foot pole I don't want Antonio Brown on my team I don't care how good he is I don't want Antonio Brown on my team. He's unreliable, okay? Right. He is a me-first, right. selfish right. player who mm -hmm. quits and throws a tantrum when things don't go his way, okay? That's who that's Antonio right. Brown has been. That's the track record you're speaking of. And that's just when it comes to football. We're not talking about and, and the bully. We're not talking about the bully that's or what worse that about. he's been or worse that's that he has been off I'm the not, field. I'm not even talking okay? about the football stuff. I'm talking about the Word. off the field stuff. That's right, right, but in, ter but in terms of Pittsburgh, his exit from Pittsburgh, his exit from Oakland, yeah. to a lesser extent, is well, not, not even to a lesser extent, his exit from New England was different, but this exit 
all on the surface seem to be related to a, a tantrum from being told what he can't have or what he can't do or what have you. Okay. Point being though. All right. <clears throat> Brady is speaking as though he knows something that we don't. Many are speculating it. I'm not comfortable speculating it without confirmation, but Brady was speaking as if, hey, this guy's dealing with something that we need to be compassionate about. And he said that after the game on Sunday. So, Michael, play this game with me, okay? Imagine if Antonio Brown breaks his leg on Sunday against the Jets. Would Bruce Arians cut him on the spot? Would he fire him on the spot? Would he say he's no, no. longer a buck right then and there? No way. No. That'd be cruel. That'd be callous. That'd be inhumane to cut an injured player the moment that he's hurt. There are procedures and steps to their injury settlements and there are ways to part ways with an injured player. I say that and I think you're picking up on where I'm going. Yeah, but now, but now, but now, but now you're I'm uncomfortable, uncomfortable with but, you. All right, but 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 I'm gonna yeah. finish. I'm gonna finish this. Though. I'm gonna finish it real quick, and then you tell me why you're uncomfortable. Okay. But hear me out. But hear me okay. out, though. Okay, because okay. I think there is yeah. room. I think there's room for a crossover between a clown whose act has gotten old and somebody who's struggling with any number of issues. I think there's room for some intersection there. I think both things could be, could be true. Perhaps one is contributing to the other. I don't know. Yeah, sure. But what but I but the thing I want to just get across to you is this is why I said yesterday and I'm actually my theory as to why the Bucks are reportedly consulting with the league and discussing next steps about what kind of designation from a personnel standpoint they could apply to Antonio Brown rather than release him. I'm not going to be so cynical as to think it's strictly to block him from continuing his career elsewhere. I think they understand how poor these optics are and I'm not talking about the optics of Antonio Brown having at best a meltdown at worst a breakdown before our eyes on Sunday. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the optics of a league that purports to care about player health and safety cutting a player when he is mentally or emotionally unwell and injured possibly I don't know that to be mm. the case and I know you feel yeah. like that's a cop out and I get why you feel like that's a cop out. But if in fact Antonio Brown if everybody knows from Tom Brady to Bruce Arians to Jason Light and everybody else if everybody knows that Antonio Brown is unwell emotionally or mentally that means you know that he is fully capable of what he did on Sunday, that he is volatile and that he is erratic. The only difference is on Monday is that according to Bruce Arians, he was insubordinate and he embarrassed you. But why is what he did any more embarrassing than any of the other transgressions that he has done but didn't stop you from signing him in the first place, which is why I will, the last thing I'll say for now is what I said yesterday. The Bucks should not be able to get off so easy as to just cut him. That would be the only thing that's convenient is cutting him and saying go with yeah. God and I hope he gets the help he needs elsewhere because if you thought enough of Antonio Brown to look past him throwing furniture out of a window and nearly hit, hitting, hitting or hurting a child to look past sexual yeah. assault allegations to look past uh, a fake vaccination card. I know I'm forgetting something to look past yeah, all the, the domestic violence. <laughs> I, I'm sure I am yeah. right. If yeah. you thought enough of him to look past all that knowing what you were getting. Then to me, this feels like a hey, we're going to take that whole package and all Antonio Brown did was Antonio Brown. He had an episode that should not have surprised anybody least of all the Buccaneers. And, the, and this right. is what this is what made me uncomfortable yesterday was Bruce Arians saying he's no longer a buck. Well, hold on. He was a buck despite everything else he did. Yesterday was his last straw when okay. he all he did was exhibit the type of behavior that Tom Brady suggested on that podcast is the type of behavior that somebody that is dealing with these issues. I don't know may pop off and exhibit. I rest my case floor is yours. Okay. Now I'm very uncomfortable. Now, okay. now, now I'm very uncomfortable. Uh, 
But let's just let, let, let me just untangle this here for a second. Let's start with Bruce Arians. Why would why would Tom Brady say one thing? Because they didn't say the same thing, by the way. You said Tom Brady is saying as if he knows something that we don't know. And I agree with mm-hmm. you. He is. Tom Brady sounds that way. Bruce Arians does not sound that way, or at least he didn't yesterday. Uh, or, or uh, excuse me, at least he didn't on Sunday. After the game, he said he's no longer a buck. Why don't we talk about the other guys who are out there who, who, who helped us win this game? He was clearly annoyed. That annoyance was articulated uh, articulated even further with Peter King, Football Morning in America. He tells Peter Antonio Brown can't help himself. He's right. saying he didn't say right. let's display some compassion. Basically, he quit. So yes. Bruce Arians called him a quitter. Tom Brady says, I love him. He's a friend of mine. I think we should have some compassion. Okay, somewhere somewhere there's a disconnect. Can I tell you where the disconnect is? Longevity. Bruce Arians was his wide receivers coach in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Bruce Arians has known him for a long time. And I'm not saying this is right, but this is the, okay, this mm-hmm. is where we go from football to real life. Yeah. If you you known somebody for more than a decade. And mm-hmm. you know what they're capable of doing. You may not be as compassionate as I would be if I come in. I've met them two years ago, or I, I, I spent more time with them in the last two years, two or three years. That's when mm-hmm. uh, Tom Brady and, and AB were in New England together in 2019. So three years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bruce Arians is like, nah, man. I didn't want to sign him in the first place. You're Tom right. Brady. I'm Bruce Arians. You got more power than I do. So you're going to win. This I told one. you yesterday. I didn't think I thought that hang up about it could go either way was in my opinion. Right. Bruce Arians was like, look, Tom, Jason, I don't want him here after the fake vaccination. Thing, I don't want him, but Bruce I'll take one for the team. That's my that's yeah. what I think happened. And so and, 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 I don't think and he, and he, he was in the red yesterday on, on Sunday. He was in the red and Antonio Brown only had one time to cross him. I think it's above his pay grade right now too, with Arians. I think Arian said exactly the way he feels. I'm done with him. I've seen this act before. Yeah, yeah. I think I take mental health seriously, but I know something's going on with this guy. Like, and and, and that's what's so difficult, Mike. This is why I'm uncomfortable because now I'm going into an area th- that is that is far, far above my area of expertise. And 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 I'm going to say this: this is the area. This is the uncomfortable area for me. Okay. You're in a safe space. How? When we talk about mental health, how far are we willing to go? See, I made the mm-hmm. argument to you before that you could say that Henry Ruggs yeah. has a mental health issue. Yeah. If you're if you're if you're if you're driving drunk, if you're driving at 130, 150 miles per hour, however fast he was going, it was crazy to the right. point where the person, the car in front of him, hits the car in front of him, the car uh, catches on fire. Uh, driver is dead. So right. Henry Ruggs driving fast and drunk and out of control. That's mental right. health. Something's but, wrong there. Yeah, but 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 we don't but we okay. That's but when not the Raiders excuse. cut him. What right? No, but right. I'm saying but when the Raiders not, cut yeah. him, nobody said yeah. why are the Raiders you. cutting him? And so right. and w- whether it's Antonio Brown or Calvin Ridley or, or Henry mm-hmm. Ruggs, there are different categories that we pick. There's a face of mental health that we're okay embracing and I'm mm-hmm. criticizing myself on this. And then there's the Antonio Brown category where yes, exactly. it might be mental health this time. It might be exactly that, but Correct. because of his past, right? I'm having a hard time saying, oh, sure. And, and, yeah. and I wouldn't have a hard time saying, hey, Josh Gordon needs help. I wouldn't have a hard time saying somebody uh, is, is tired of football or thinking about life away from football. They're 25, 26 years old and they don't know uh, which way they want to go right now. I'm sympathetic to that. Mm-hmm. I'm having a hard time showing that compassion that Tom Brady uh, asked me to have once again or Antonio Brown. Thank you for your once again. Thank you for your honesty and I'm not uncomfortable with anything you just said. I will break that cycle because I completely understand where you're coming from and I share that conflict. I share that conflict of what I think like a reporter once upon a time that we both know that we work with in Boston once told a fan infamously the difference between me and you is you think I know. Okay. 
Okay, it's one oh, of the best lines goodness. in media that, history, okay? So arrogant, right? <laughs> right, and okay. And so on brand, and on brand for right. that reporter. I don't know what's going on with Antonio Brown. I could guess, I could surmise. We could say, you know what? Hey, how could somebody, you know, this is this is on brand for Antonio Brown. If anybody was ever going to strip on his way out of a stadium, it was going to be Antonio Brown, followed by catching an Uber, talking about a Netflix series in the backseat, followed by dropping a rap single on his Twitter account, followed by, oh, by the way, courtside at a Grizzlies game, you know, looking like everything's just fine, okay? Just being Antonio Brown, full of drama, I understand why you would be uncomfortable putting him in the same category as Naomi Osaka or um, or Simone Biles or somebody who fits the profile. But isn't that the point? Isn't that the point of our collective evolution is yeah, to not sure. subscribe to stereotypes about this or not know yes. that mental health and, and disturbances uh, or, or, or mental issues, excuse me, do not discriminate. I mean, listen, again, right. I'm not diagnosing him. I'm not here to diagnose him. But we do know that he's taken some incredible hits over the course of his career. It's something to consider. It's it doesn't excuse everything. And yesterday, Michael, I took it to an extreme in some people's opinion when I when I said, yeah, you hear mental health being thrown around cavalier all the time. And you know, when when there's a when there's a, you know, a mass shooting or domestic violence. But I'm making a point when I say this that people immediately say, oh, well, he's mentally disturbed. That does a disservice. And I know you feel the same way to people who are navigating their mental health journeys who don't resort to certain types of behavior. So Millions. I understand why, people. I understand why you would feel some kind of way about Antonio Brown, who's been a clown getting the pass from his quarterback and others of mental health, but it doesn't make it any less of a possibility. It doesn't make it any less real and all I'm suggesting. I'm not disagreeing with you about, about Bruce Arians. Okay, Bruce Arians has every right to be frustrated. Bruce Arians has every right to say enough is enough for my team. But a week ago, that same Antonio Brown, who you knew had these issues, this isn't a surprise. You signed up for him to be a part of your team. Brady didn't bring him in in a vacuum. Everybody benefited from Antonio Brown. And speaking of benefits, my only suggestion is that be a middle ground. I'm not saying you run him out there next Sunday like it's nothing. I'm saying to cut him loose doesn't feel right if in fact well, this is a mental health issue well, because it's well, no okay, different but, than somebody being injured. You would well, have a certain a procedure well, that you would have to a, a, abide by before you let him go. You understand what I'm okay. saying? All right, but yeah, but okay, here's here's this is this is the only distinction. If I'm injured, I'm usually not going to argue with you over that. Like if I tear my ACL, I got a torn ACL. Uh, I got a second opinion. Yes, uh, that doctor says it too. Torn Achilles, uh, hamstring, whatever it is, elbow, shoulder. I'm usually not arguing with you that I'm injured. We are going to work together. I think there's to, more to that. There's got to be to, more to, to, to that. It, it could not have been as simple but, as that. It has to be more to it than well, that. Well, has to be. Which but but still I'm on. saying with. But with but with mental health, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about the ankle. Mentioned, I, I apologize. No, with, with some. Yeah, but no, that's fine. With some of the people that we mentioned, they've told you. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm struggling. I, one of the, the most powerful pieces of sound, in my opinion, in 2021, was Naomi Osaka saying, "I'm struggling right now. I'm struggling. Sometimes I'm not happy. I need to step away from tennis. It's." It, it's 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 hurting me right now. I'm not as happy as I should be. I mean, it's an acknowledgement of, hey, something's going on, and I need to get it checked out. Thank, bravo. Okay. And I think okay. a lot of people. So short of that, saying that, no, but but he doesn't need to do that for me. Okay. I don't need to hear it. Antonio Brown doesn't need to do that for me. Just like Naomi. It'd be nice if he did it for himself. Did, right. That's my point. And so, but if what he are you doesn't, supposed to do? If you're if you but if you're Bruce Arians, because I you think about it from his perspective or think about it from your oh, perspective as a boss. Okay, as a boss. Okay. Yeah, you're paying somebody to you're paying somebody to do a job. And you know, somebody had to talk you into signing this employee in the first place. Uh huh. So uh -huh. you feel some kind of way about him anyway. So you're watching right. them a little closely 
And right when you just asked them, you still paid them, checks didn't bounce. You asked them, hey, could you go into the game? And, and they make a whole show out of that. Are you right. thinking, hey, mental health? Or are you thinking, you know what? I'm done. Are you thinking, hey, go somewhere else and I be get great? It. Right? But, right. So, <laughs> so you know, I love that. Mike, I, I get I, it. I, I don't know. And, I mean, and listen, it's just tough. It's we got tough. we we got it. We got to go to break. But Michael, you knew all that. You're Bruce Arians. You have every right to be like, I can't I can't deal with this anymore. But you knew all that when you gave him another second chance after the vaccination card. You knew what you were getting when your yeah. quarterback signed convinced you to bring him in in the first place. Where were Which all these cries for Antonio though. Brown? Like I let him hey, come well, back. Yeah, I let him come back after the vaccination thing. No, I'm done. I, that's he what I'm saying. Thinking during the game, he wasn't even but thinking about the Jets. He like we gonna beat right. the Jets. I'm just thinking for about all what of I'm us, Michael, about Antonio Brown after the and game. And for the NFL in particular, this is a teachable moment. They have procedures. Yeah. They have a medical tent. They have doctors. They have all sorts of people on standby if somebody hurts themselves. Physically, but you gotta work. This but you gotta what it, open you yourself gotta up a little it. bit, don't you? I'm t- but really? I hear you. All I'm saying is the NFL needs to have a procedure in place for when somebody really loses it on the field, when somebody okay. really sure. loses their yeah. mind yeah. on the field. Yeah. And in the meantime, yeah. you ain't got to play Antonio Brown, but you ain't got to cut him either. Put him on the non-football injury list. Don't wish him the best. Give him the best support you could because you signed up to have him on your team until it became inconvenient for you. There's a middle ground here, and I just don't think washing your hands of him is the right way for the Bucks to handle this. What if he doesn't play for you, but you still allow him to take advantage of your resources, even though he's not a member That's of exactly what I want. That's exactly what I would like to see. Bingo. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.